One of the other challenging characteristics of wood is its anisotropic nature. What that means is it has different properties in different directions. Different strength properties, different shrinkage and swelling, different everything. And so that too has to be taken into account, has to be managed, has to be designed for whatever product you're trying to deal with. Um, again, just a piece of veneer and yellow poplar, one of our favorite species here in the Appalachians. We use it for everything. Um, longitudinal direction, that's the, the height of the tree, the length of the log, whatever it takes for you to remember that. Tangential direction, uh, this was also just peeled off a log like a roll of paper towels. So most of this is pure tangential. As you can see, it wants to curl, just like the way it peeled off. Um, fibers in the wood, the cells, have different orientations with different directions. Tree grows in height. Most of the cells in wood are longitudinal. If, if you think of wood as a bundle of drinking straws, it's a pretty good visual analogy of what's going on in there. Most of the cells are long hollow tubes, and so it acts accordingly. Um, some other cells going in the radial direction, but they don't have a lot of effect on what we're about to try to do. Um, in terms of strength properties, if we try to span this piece across a tangential direction, there's just nothing there. You know, wood bends very easily in that direction. Not going to work very well. If we span the longitudinal cells across the supports, totally different behavior. All of a sudden, we have some strength here, some strength in bending. Um, that's how we have to think when we're designing structures and, and using wood materials. If I just take a pile of these and they're all aligned the same way, again, spanning across the tangential direction where we don't have a lot of strength all by itself in, in this veneer, at least, uh, still not a lot here. We didn't gain anything by adding thickness as long as these pieces are free to slide. If we put some glue in there, it would stiffen it up a little bit. Um, the easier thing to do is then alternate these 90 degrees each layer, creating our sandwich. We have bending strength. We have bending strength. And it's pretty much uniform regardless of how we orient this thing, how we load it. And so what we've created is basically plywood. We haven't glued it together yet, but this is the basic idea behind most plywood. And you then build a panel that's predictable and has fairly uniform strength properties in each direction. You also have the added benefit then of restraining the wood's tendency to shrink and swell. Because as I said earlier, your shrinkage and swelling along the longitudinal direction is almost negligible. So if you can alternate that within each ply, that prevents this panel from shrinking and swelling as much as just normal wood would do. So this was one of what we call the earliest engineered wood products. And the field of engineered wood products is very interesting. It continues to change and new products are constantly developed to meet new needs, new challenges, and that's where we'll go next.